Welcome to The Swing of Things with Amanda Kraus. Our podcast covers all things rowing within the United States and is produced by Row360. I'm your host, Amanda Kraus. This episode is hosted by U.S. Rowing Athlete Council Chair and London 2012 Olympian, Sarah Hendershot. She's joined by Elena Seguin, John Patton, and Elsa Hartman from the current U.S. Under-19 team who are preparing to race at the World Under-19 Rowing Championships in Varese, Italy. The coxswain from Greenwich, Elena Seguin, makes her international debut with the men's coxed four, while John Patton is set to compete in the men's eight and hopes to defend his 2021 world title. Likewise, 2021 World U19 champion Elsa Hartman makes her return to the women's aid. Hi, everybody. I'm so excited to be here today. My name is Sarah Hendershot. I have with me three U19 athletes who are going to talk to us about everything that they've been up to this summer as they prepare for the world championships. It would be great if we start off. We're just going to kind of go around a circle. I'd love you all to introduce yourself just by saying what your name is so we can recognize your voice a little bit, um, hear where you're from, what club you typically row for, and then what boat you're going to be competing in this summer. So Elsa, would you like to start? Sure. Um, I'm Elsa Hartman. I'm from Northern California in the Sacramento area. Um, at home, I row for Capital Crew, and this summer I'll be racing in the straight four. Awesome. Thanks, Elsa. John, would you go next? Sure. Uh, my name is John Patton. Uh, I live in Houston, Texas, and I row for a school called Deerfield uh, Academy in Western Massachusetts, and I'm going to be in the men's eight. Awesome. Thanks, John. And Elena, would you go next? Um, hi, I'm Elena Sagan. I'm from Connecticut, and I wrote for Greenwich Crew, and I'll be coxing the men's four. Great. So we have three totally different experiences, different boats, uh, different boat classes. It's going to be great to follow you all along this summer. Can't wait to see you compete. But first, what I would love to hear is just how has camp been going? Um, you're all in Chula Vista, California right now. We were just talking about what it's like to be able to train at that Olympic Training Center and live in the dorms. But I'd love to just hear what has the camp been like and, and how's it going? So maybe this time we will start with Elena. Will you will you jump in and let us know? Um, so, so far, camp has been really great. It's definitely a new environment, especially adjusting here from home. But overall, I've really enjoyed it. It's just meeting a lot of new people who all row different strokes and everyone's coming together with one similar goal. So it's really great. Yeah, and as a coxswain in that position, it really is a big responsibility for you to be able to recognize a lot of those differences that you're seeing and help that crew blend together. So what are you doing to to really try to achieve that? I feel like the one thing is when we walked in here, everybody had a similar stroke that they were all trying to like go for. So they gave us one stroke and said, everyone try and match this up as best you can. So my biggest thing was just going with that stroke, seeing how well I could get everyone to blend together and make the boat as smooth as possible. So it's been my goal so far. That's great. And that's super helpful that the coaches and the leadership set that standard for you all right away. If you don't mind me asking, what what does the U.S. rowing stroke look like right now at the U19 camp? Like, Can you describe that a little bit? I definitely think it changes boat to boat because, of course, there's a different stroke from a straight four or an eight to a cox four. So personally, being in the Cox 4, we definitely want to focus a lot more on the finish and just like ending the stroke as powerfully as possible when in the 8, you want to focus a bit more on the front end and getting the catch like sharp and quick and as possible. So definitely changes from boat to boat. But overall, we have the powerful drive and the long recovery. Love it. That's awesome. John, how is camp going for you on the men's side in the 8? Uh, camp is going well. Um... I think one of the best parts about this place is that you never have to look at your phone to see what the weather's going to be because it's always the same. Um, I think it's always just like, it's always perfect and sunny. Um, and that's, that's one of the best things about this place. Um, and another great thing is that like, one thing I love is that you can just train and you don't have to worry about school or anything else. It's just, you're always focused on training, um, and like how you can improve, which helps a lot when you just have one thing to focus on. Um, and like my, my coach always says, like, be the empty, empty cup is what he calls it. And I think it's, um, like a good analogy is to think about just always coming to practice, emptying and forgetting about everything else and just like focusing on one thing, um, and try and forget about everything that's happening outside of practice and just try and be there, uh, in the moment. So 
Uh, that's one of my favorite sayings from him. But um, practice is going well. Everything's going well. Um, and it's really nice being out here in California. Um, it's very different from the Northeast where I row. Um, and like Elena was saying, it's it's definitely strange for me personally switching from a, I row a four in the Cox four all year. So switching from a four to an eight is is interesting um, because there's they are different strokes. Um, so it's it's been fun and, and exciting. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm excited just to see how we can improve over the next five days before we leave. I love all of that. I mean, as a fellow New Englander, there's nothing like hearing the appreciation of Californian weather, right? Like <laughs> you, you practice all year round in Massachusetts where you don't know what you're going to get on any given day. Uh, and I live in Boston now. So looking at the Charles, one day you're going to get perfect, flat, beautiful glass. And the next it's not even close to rowable. So you're right. That is definitely one of the best parts about being in Chula Vista. Uh, what else outside of your practices are you doing with your teammates to, you know, come together as a crew? That's always one of my favorite things to hear about as well. How are you, how are you all bonding? And I'm sure you're coming from many different rowing programs. What's filling the time outside of practice? I, well, one thing we're doing is we're, uh, we've been watching like a lot of shows and movies. So that like, that's helped as a group to do that. It's just kind of fun sitting around. We'll have like these rooms that we have can't really fit. The common spaces can't really fit like 12 people, but we'll just shove 12 people in there, all on the ground. Um, in fact, one thing we did that wasn't really allowed was we <laughs> we took two couches that are turned out to be like pull-out so, like pull couches. Um, so they had like turned into beds too. And we made this thing, we called it mega bed. So we, we combined two of these pull-out couches together and just like we filled this whole common room with just bed space. And we just all sat in there and watched, um, like we watched, we rewatched all the Star Wars and watch some of the new TV shows on Netflix. Um, so that's been fun. And then another thing we have, luckily a couple of the kids on our, on the men's side at least have um, cars. So that's helped um, because we, we can like go to, like the last night we went to Blaze Pizza, um, or at least my boat did, just to have like a, a meal together outside of here. Um, because I know, especially from boarding school, it's like, it's nice to get out once in a while and do something different and eat something different um, than what you eat here. So. Um, yeah, that's what we've been sort of filling our time with. That's great. I love all of that. And we'll see if uh, nobody from the center can hear about Megabed and get you in trouble. <laughs> uh, but Elsa, how about you? How has it been going so far for camp for you? Yeah, it's been going really well. Um, I think it's been really fun to sort of have this combination of like returners along with like um, new people, um, especially like in my boat, like we have two returners and then two people who were from Canamex last year. And I think it's been really cool to, like, see all the technical changes we've been able to make. Um, and, like, I don't know. I just think our, like, improvements have been really fun. And um, same thing, like, as what John was saying, like, along with the training center. Like, I really like being able to just, like, put everything into my practices and then just be able to, like, walk up to the dining hall right after and, like, sort of, like, let that be so that, like, each practice is, like, has, like, my full effort and, like, all of my attention. Um, but, yeah, it's been really good. And I... I really like um, meeting people from like all over the country who like all have a common interest in rowing. Um, I think it's just really fun and I, it's a really fun like environment to be in. That is definitely one of the best parts of bringing athletes together from all different corners of the country, right? Is that you get to learn new things from them and hear about what their experiences are like. What do you feel like you are learning from your teammates? Maybe, maybe we can talk about that, every one of you sharing something that you're learning, whether it's rowing or just athletics per performance um, you know, perspective, or is it a mentality, or is it just something personal that you're learning from your teammates that are from different programs than you are? Elsa, can I have you jump back in? Yeah, I think um, for me, like the first thing that came to mind was more of a technical side. Um, in the straight four, like I personally have been working a lot on catches. Um, and I think a big thing that I've been like practicing is um, getting my catch in more of like a diagonal like trajectory. Um, and so Sam, one of the girls on my boat, has really helped me um, like get another like set of eyes on that and like help me um, improve the way that my catches go in um, and like that then translates into like the first end of my drive. And so she's really helping me with that. Um, and I think more than that, I think just as a mentality, like our boat um, 
really emphasizes like pushing for more and like striving for more. And I think that like we together have learned how to like, first of all, like always go the extra mile, but at the same time, like become like be confident in like what we have. Um, and like, I think a big thing we've been working on is like staying positive. And I think each of us together have been working on that. Um, and I, I've learned that a lot from my teammates of taking each practice, like a a grain of salt and like knowing that we have things to work on, but at the same time, there are always like good parts of the practice that like we can also emphasize along with that. So I think it's sort of two sides, like one, like the basic, like technical thing, but also like, um, just sort of as a boat mindset in general that I've really appreciated. Totally. And those are both really great lessons to take with you onto however far you you take rowing as a sport, right? Because every rower you row with, you're going to learn something new about how to visualize or execute a technical component. And then at the same time, that mentality of of really being able to give a practice uh, the perspective that it deserves, where it's just one little piece in a bigger puzzle. And, you know, having that one piece not fit perfectly on day one does not mean that it's not going to fit when you need it to a couple weeks from now. Yeah, so that's great. I love hearing all of that. Elena, how about you? What are you learning from your teammates that are from different clubs? Um, I think the biggest thing I'm learning is how to, like, adapt every day to the new calls and the new boat. I think a big thing is because we have such little time with each other, we t- really take advantage of every day and really try and work with each other and make the best out of every practice, especially because everybody here is like very hardworking and we all have one common goal. So I think every day it's just learning how to, like if we have a bad practice, just put that behind you and move on to the next one. Really appreciate the good practices, just like Elsa said. And then also I think I'm learning like how it is to be on a boys team like in a different environment than just home like the only team that I've personally coxed is at Greenwich so coming into a place where there's people that are from all different places of the country it's really fun to just see how you can bond with them and see how like how everybody really really likes crew of course so it's nice to just be around people that have similar interests as you and just be able to build good relationships with them. Yeah, it can sometimes seem like when you're in high school that you're the only pocket of rowers within your community that is that obsessed with the sport. And then you get to these big regattas or you get to a national team experience and you're like, oh, these are my people. (laughs) They're all over the place. Um, So that's great. And Elena, you know, the other cool part too as a coxswain is that you are the coach in the boat, right? So... What are you noting about the personalities in your boat, too, that you're having to get to know and then figure out what they respond to from a a coxing and a coaching perspective? Because you don't have a ton of time to figure all of that out very quickly, too, and really need to maximize on those components for your performance. Uh, For me, the biggest thing I would say is just kind of troubleshooting every practice. So, of course, everybody in the boat has a different style of coxing that they're used to and that they like. So just trying to take all their feedback and especially at the end of every row, I like to ask the rower, like, oh, if there is a specific call that you liked, please tell me. And if there is one that you guys don't think like motivated you that much, then let me know that too, and we'll stop using it. So I think every day it's just going in there with a clean mind and an open head, like getting ready to start something new and try something new. And then just seeing exactly how the boat works. Um, responds to a specific call that you make and kind of working with that. I love that. And I saw that you had an interview with Row 2K just a few days ago where you mentioned that uh, one of your coaches had told you to be really adaptable as a coxswain. It sounds like that's exactly what you're doing, right? You're willing to be adaptable both from the coaches that are there for the camp, but also from the feedback you're getting from your rowers. Yeah, of course. So that's the biggest thing for me about being a coxswain is just knowing how to modify my coxing to best fit the boat. And I think coming from home, that was a mindset that I also shared there. So it's been, it's been a new environment, but it's hasn't been terribly hard. So it's good. Great. And and John, what are you learning from your teammates from different uh, clubs? Where, where is everybody else in the boat that you're in spread out across the country from? Um, Well, quickly, like what, I'm just going to back up what um, Elena said. I think, one thing that's really special about this camp um, and this place is that you are sur- everybody you're surrounded with works as hard as you do and wants to work as hard as you do and cares as much. Um, and when you're around people like that all the time, every day, uh, it really pushes you to be the best that you can be. Um, 
and like that's one it's like it can be great um because everybody here is so competitive and wants to work so hard that even on the simplest things um like stretching or something it's like everybody's trying to see like who can do the best like who can be the best um which i think is great um but yeah a funny story about like where people are from um before camp my my coxswain who i had the same coxswain last year when i was in the eight um texted me that there was going to be a four to five St. Joe's prep kids coming. Um, and my first reaction was like, okay, well, one is a lot. I was like, one is a lot, but four to five is like, that's way too much to handle. Um, and that's only just because when I've raced them throughout the season, they, they're always loud and they're always like the loudest team and they're always just seem so obnoxious. Um, but in reality, one thing I thought about is it's, it may, it's probably really, really frustrating to race somebody like that but to be on a team with those kids is really special um because they care so much and so i think that's one awesome thing about um having a boat from kids from all different programs is that each one adds a different perspective uh and sort of flair and energy to the boat so like those are two we have two saint joe's kids in our boat and they're both always screaming and yelling um and it really helps a lot it it gets everybody excited in fact it it motivates us to start talking a lot too um so that's great and then we've we have kids from washington so yeah we've kids from philly washington um newport i'm trying to remember um where else i think that and a kid from greenwich as well so that covers the majority of it um and it's honestly great getting each little um sort of culture that kids will take from their clubs and sort of helping put that infuse that into our boat um and sort of take something from it is 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 good and it also helps me realize when i go back home like what i can do differently and how i can act at my own club um in school to like to help kids feel motivated and like also to to race and like how to yeah just those general ideas yeah i love that i think that was a, a great lesson to take away about how you might not you might not expect right away what great quality in your teammate might actually help to raise you up. And I won't hold it against you because my husband was a St. Joe's prep rower. Uh, <laughs> um, but that's great. I'm so excited that you are all taking a lot away from this camp. The world championships are right around the corner. You guys leave next week, right? So what are you looking forward to the most about racing and about that world championship experience? Anybody who wants to jump in? So personally, I've never raced internationally, and I think a big thing going into the World Championship is you know absolutely nothing about anybody, which I think is a new challenge, but definitely exciting. Coming from like national champions and everything like that, you kind of know relatively how fast everyone is and who everyone is at the minimum. So you'll know who's in your competition, who you'll be with, how they've been doing so far, which is comforting, but at the same time, it makes it I don't know, a bit less exciting. So going to Worlds, just having a really blank slate and seeing what kind of piece you can throw down personally and very individually is very, it's very enticing to me. So that's what I'm most excited for, just kind of seeing the field and seeing how fast everyone is and especially seeing how fast our boat is on a international level. I love it. And don't for a second let newbie experience to the international level make you think that that means that you might be at a disadvantage my very first international race ever in the women's pair was at the Olympics. So you can do that. It's very doable. It's all about just showing up as your best self on the day that it matters. Elsa, what about you? You will be returning to the world championship. So what are you looking forward to in a week's time when you're over there in Italy? Yeah, um, I think that R4 has made a lot of strides and progress um, over the short amount of time that we've been here at camp. And so I'm really excited to put all of that together and really just see how fast we can race down the course. Um, so, yeah, I'm just I think we've there's so many little things that we've gotten better at. And I, I just can't wait to, like, see that in action in the race course. And I think along with that, um, kind of along with what we were saying earlier about um, having community in rowing last year, something I really appreciated about Worlds was seeing so many different rowers from all over the world. Um, and like knowing that like we're all from such different cultures, but we still have this commonality of rowing and it's all something that we love and we love to push ourselves in. Um, and so that was something that I really enjoyed and like seeing, um, rowers from other countries, like after racing and like being friendly with them, um, and just being able to, to like know that we all have this common thing that we, we love and enjoy. So 
That's great. Does the gear swapping tradition still exist? It does. Yeah. That's great. So for anybody who isn't aware of that and you're listening to the podcast, what often happens, and you all will have to tell your teammates who are new to the team that this is coming so they can prepare for it. Basically, after racing, you end up meeting up with all these other international rowers and everybody brings their gear. It can be high school gear. It can be your USA gear and you trade for the other country's gears. So you can come home with Italian unisuits and German unisuits and Great Britain long sleeves and Canadian hats. And it becomes your whole new international wardrobe for the next year. So I love that that's still happening. That's great. John, what about you? What are you most looking forward to with racing as a returning athlete as well and getting over there to Italy? One thing that's good, I guess, about being a returner is that you sort of have an idea of what it's going to be like when you get there. Um, so I know a lot of there's uh, three kids on our boat who was in the same eight last year, um, including myself. And we all we all have it. We like all three of us have an idea of what it's going to be like. But there's a lot of kids who don't. And I'm sure who can be who would get who can get nervous about that um so i think it's going to be like helpful and and a good exercise to like help them through that and make sure that everybody is like on on their game um and understand is not stressed pretty much when we show up to the starting line so that's one of the big goals um and then another thing that's good about it or that i'm excited for at least is it was like going up against another crew or at least having another men's eight next to us that we can race against um it's always exciting racing against somebody and we don't always get to do that here um we they try their hardest by having everybody go off of like their gold medal standard timing so their gms times when we did like pieces this morning um everybody would be spread apart and we'd sort of be racing each other um but that's always not as exciting as it is to race a crew um like germany or great britain or something like that that's right alongside you pushing you as hard as they can so um i'm excited for that that feeling again um and sort of also wearing, I guess wearing like you, like unis and other clothes that say like United States rowing on is pretty cool and special. Um, so being able to go out on the water those first few days and train there um, and sort of be representing our country is pretty, I feel like that's pretty cool. It is really cool. It's a huge honor anytime that you get to put on the red, white, and blue and know that you're representing our country. So I love that one. None of you mentioned the food. The food over there is going to be amazing. Is nobody looking forward to that? Well, I'll pivot this to another question. Uh, I'd love to hear from all of you what your views are in terms of where you want to take this sport, right? Right now you're at the U19 level. Do you have plans for what you want to do next in terms of college or are you going to try for U23s? Do any of you have big aspirations of wanting to build your way up to the senior team? What does that look like for you? Yeah, so right now since I'm a so since I'm a junior, um, I... I'm not into any college yet, so I haven't, I haven't decided on any college. Um, so I can't say anything about college yet, but I am still eligible for next year um, to come back for U19 if I have the opportunity. So um, this would, yeah, so I'd have three years at U19, which would be pretty cool. And then, yeah, I was texting my brother the other day and I was telling him that it'd be kind of fun if we did a pair or something at some point um, for the US or try to do something like that. Um, because I feel like that'd be pretty special to row with him. But um, besides that, I don't know. It's always, I've always like looked at trying to be in the Olympics one day um, or trying to go for U23s or whatever I can do. Um, so I think I'm always going to train and try to go as high, as far as I can. Um, and the Paris Olympics are very close, which is frustrating because we're all still very young. Um, so that can be hard to look for. But anything beyond that or even that would be amazing to be a part of. I like the way you're thinking about that, John, too, because it really actually leans into your coach's advice about being an empty cup, right? And making sure that you're being present in the current moment. Because while it can be fun to plan for what's next and down the road with your rowing career, it's so hard to predict what's going to happen and how you're going to feel three or four years from now. But focusing on what you're enjoying at the moment and what's directly ahead of you, I think, is a great way to, to go at all of this as well. Elsa or Elena, do you have any thoughts that you'd like to add just about the sport in general and where you think you might want to take it? Yeah, so uh, I'm committed to UVA, to row, so I'm really excited for that. I think, um, yeah, I'm just really excited about our recruiting class. I know a couple of girls are here at camp um, and, you know, are, are going to be at Worlds with me, so that's really exciting. Um, and then 
after that, I, I do want to try to make U23s in college. Um, and then I, I mean, same with Don, I want to go as far as I can in rowing. Um, we'll see how fast I can be. Um, I don't know if that'll be an opportunity I can take advantage of. But I, I would really love to go as far as I can um, in the sport because I, I really love it. Yeah, everybody's going to be in trouble next year on the women's rowing scene because I see that there's four U19 athletes coming out of this camp headed to UVA uh, across four different boat classes and in two different countries. So everybody better be looking out for that freshman class. They're coming in hot. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm so excited. Elena, how about you? Um, so I'm in a similar boat as John. I'm going into my senior year and I'm not currently committed, but I definitely want, do want to take crew as far as I can go. I think coming here for the first time, I definitely want to like feel it out, see how I liked being in a place like this and like growing for my country, which I have found out that I've profusely enjoyed, to say the minimum. But um, So I definitely want to go for U23s, and in the future, if the Olympics are a thing in my field, I'll definitely go for it. But I think I just want to see how it goes, but definitely I want to take it as far as I can go. I love that. And, you know, we talked a lot at the beginning of this conversation as well about community. You are all, if you're all going to eventually take this sport to college, you're going to find your people there too, because that becomes like your whole rowing team in college is made up of people that think the exact same way that you do, that care a lot, that want to work hard, that want to put sport first. So I'm excited that you're all at this stage of your your young rowing career and about to enter into some really fun moments. And um, that's one thing I, I was actually, I might add is that I would so like, I would encourage anybody to do this camp um, because even if you don't make the world team or you don't make the team that you hope to make, you will still meet so many different kids um, and athletes that are really, are really great athletes too. Um, and then like one thing I noticed last year is that I came into this fall and I get to have the Charles and other regattas. I always saw somebody I knew. Um, and I felt like my dad for a second, cause my dad always walks around the Charles and like random people go up to him and being like, Hey, good to see you. And he'll be like, Hey, and he won't really know their names, but at least I'll ask them who they are. Um, so it's kind of fun having the experience to, um, be able to go to regattas like that and know everybody and sort of race against your friends. Um, in fact, I've already been talking with kids at my butt. I'm like next year, I hope like when we race each other, I'm, we're all, we're always talking about what we're going to say to each other and like how we're going to get in each other's heads. Um, so I think that's one, that's one reason I would strongly encourage like doing a camp like this is because you get to meet so many kids that you'll end up racing or even rowing with in college. I love that. And that's a great segue, John, into the next question I wanted to ask you all, which is if you are an aspiring rower who wants to try and make this U19 team or really start to take rowing seriously, what's one piece of advice that you would give other junior athletes in that position? So, John, I'm going to kick it back to you again. Um, advice I'd give. I would say um, one thing I told a friend who didn't make the team was that to not let it like get you down. Or let, let it be like, I'm not, I didn't make the junior boat, I'm not good enough. Um, and I think it's so important to not let anything like that get you down because like a trend, a certain trend with colleges is like the best kids that come out of high school aren't always the best kids in college. Um, and that's because they get like complacent and sort of start thinking like, I'm so good, I don't really need to work as hard anymore. Um, and it typically is the kids who aren't as good but want to work to get to be the best that become the best in college. So that's um sort of what i told them and i've been like I, I would strongly encourage like not letting something like that like getting cut bring you down i'd i'd actually take it more of as a motivator be like i didn't make this team what do i have to do to get to the point where i can be as good as some of these athletes that did um if not better so that's one thing i would say is like don't let something like this like getting cut for a boat get you down um, and always come in with like an open mind. That's a really great piece of advice, John. And just as a little stat, uh, when I was on the London 2012 team with women, one third of the women on that squad were walk-ons in college, right? So that is absolutely true is that while you all are going to come into a collegiate experience with a ton of, with a ton of experience from everything you've done at U19, it's, it's really never too late to start your rowing journey because you, you never know where you might be able to take it. Elsa, how about you? What's one piece of advice you would give another junior rower that wants to try to get really serious about the sport? Yeah, I think something that I learned last year that really helped me um, get through camp was really being aware of my recovery um, and like treating my body well, especially in a camp scenario where um, you have a lot of like 
freedom and you have to stay on top of your own hydration and there's nobody there like telling you what to do. Um, I, I found it really, really important to make sure I was getting enough water, eating enough and the right, the right food that would fuel me for performance. Um, and so I think being very like aware of that and conscious, conscious of how, um, your recovery is going to affect how you row, um, that definitely, um, played a big role in, um, just played a big role in like how prepared I felt, um, for racing. And I think being prepared for me helps me mentally, um, feel better going into to race pieces or racing in general. So that's such a great piece of advice. So you mentioned nutrition, hydration, anything else that you include in part of your recovery routine? Yeah. Um, definitely stretching. Um, I always make sure to stretch before and after practice. Um, along with that, just like making sure your warm up and cool down is like adequate. I think it's easy to, you know, not go like kind of like skip out a little bit on the warm up, just like go heading into pieces. But I think actually like taking the time to warm up your body and make sure you're prepped and ready to race, um, definitely helps, um, you get out there on the water. Love it. Those are all great pieces of advice. Elena, you'll be the last one on this one, especially for coxswains. What piece of advice do you have for them that want to maybe get into some national team rowing or even just trying to get themselves up a level of boats at the current club that they're at? It's such a bigger challenge with so many fewer seats to fight for as a coxswain. Um, I'd say no matter what, even if you're like hesitant to want to be on one of these teams, definitely go for it. Before coming to this camp, I can say that it was intimidating and I was definitely a bit scared to come because I only really knew a few people coming in and... So it's, it's an intimidating environment, but no matter what, definitely go for it because you're going to learn a lot no matter what. Even if you're not in the position that you want to be by the end of the camp, you're going to be on either you'll make a world boat or a Canamex boat or a selection boat. And no matter what, you're going to learn so much, especially from the people around you. And just like John was saying before, everybody here is incredibly hardworking because we all want to do similar things by the end of this, by the end of this. And so you're going to be around people with similar interests and a common goal that are going to push their absolute hardest and they're going to push you your absolute hardest no matter what. So I'd say just shoot your shot and see where it takes you because no matter what, you're going to grow from this experience. I love it. That's great too. Okay, we're going to start to wrap this up. We're going to do three rapid fire questions. So we'll go around just quick answers for these, but fun topics that I'd love to hear from you on. First one is, what is your current favorite Netflix or streaming show? John, you're up first because you mentioned watching TV before. Yeah, um, it was Stranger Things. And then I saw the final episode and it really bothered me. It was just like, it was, it's such a good show and I probably like will continue watching it. But it was just so frustrating because it like left you on a total cliffhanger that uh, was a good segue to like to the new season that's going to come out. But it's like so frustrating watching something like that and then not knowing what's going to happen. Um, so yeah, that's probably, that was probably my favorite show right now. Good one. Elena, how about you? What's your favorite streaming show? Um, I think I have to agree with John. Stranger Things is definitely my number one, even though I am frustrated with the ending because there are a lot of other turnouts that I were hoping to happen, but overall it's especially like watching it with the people here. It's just fun. So it's a Stranger Things. Love it. And you, Elsa? I actually would also say Stranger Things. I haven't <laughs> finished it yet, so we'll see what the ending is like for me. But yeah, uh, so far I really like it. So basically homework for all of our listeners. If you have not watched Stranger Things yet, you are missing out and you better go do that. <laughs> um, next rapid fire question. I would love to hear quickly what your most memorable rowing moment is right now. If you can think of one moment that really sticks out to you that you've had in the sport of rowing, what is that moment? John, you're up first again. I don't know. I, there's so many, I don't know. There's so many moments. Um, I guess last year going through, this is going to be a boring one, but going through like the finish line at the, when, at the end of Worlds, um, being like the, the first place team and having the, everybody, having the women eight just won. They just won the race before us and having the women's Cox four won. Um, and we crossed the finish line, bringing like the third gold medal, which allowed the U.S. to win the whole event. Um, and seeing everybody like as you cross the line cheering you on is pretty special. So it's kind of cool um, because most of my races throughout the year are very like there's not much of a crowd because like my school league is very 
quiet. Um, and there's always like, there's always just parents who are there who care a lot, uh, but no one else. But seeing like the whole Roman community there kind of cheering you on is pretty special. I do not think that's a boring one. That's a pretty amazing one. Um, so well done. Way to set the stage. Elena, you have to go next after that one. <laughs> um, I don't know if I can live up if John says that that's boring. But I'd say my favorite one would be probably Youth Nationals, just because I'm definitely very close to some of the people in that boat, and we've been working hard all season. So just seeing that the hard work pays off is definitely a reward. So mine would be the 2022 Youth Nats final. And Elsa, how about you? Um, I would probably also say Worlds last year um, during our final. Um, sort of same thing. It was just like very surreal for me. And like going into it, that like winning was definitely not something that I had really expected at all like obviously that's what we were working for but it was just amazing to see everything come into place um and cross that finish line so yeah I love that that's great um and I would just remind you all too because those are some pretty amazing highlighting moments um sometimes your most memorable moments do not have to be the peak of that championship season right I, I mean I've won an Olympic trials. I won a world championship gold. I've broken world records. I went to the Olympics. None of those are my most memorable moments. My most memorable ones come out of college and not even in a championship race, in a dual race. So keep soaking up everything that gets thrown at you because you never know when you're going to have one of those moments that just stick with you forever. Okay, last question, and we're wrapping this whole thing up. This is a, a question that our CEO, Amanda, asks everybody that comes on the podcast. She loves to hear what is your favorite post-rowing snack. So as soon as you were to come off the water, and you can even think about what you maybe are eating in the Chula Vista cafeteria, but what's your favorite thing once you're finished with a row to be able to reward yourself with when you're done? Elena, I'll have you start this time. Um, as random as it is, I'd say my favorite is probably a big bowl of cereal. Just like, as personally, I'm not like a health freak when it comes to cereal. Just getting like a big bowl of cereal with some milk in it, milk in it after practice is my go-to. That sounds good. I like it. What about you, John? Um, I don't know. I've, I like last year during the uh, world championships, I liked the, um, they would give us these after we'd get off our row, they'd give us these little Gatorade slushies. And then um, like these little granola ball honey things with like raisins in it. And that was pretty good. Um, but then I've been learning from my Philly friends that apparently uh, cheese steaks after a row. And they said you get if you get them um, whiz wit is what they call it. And whiz is like cheese whiz and and the uh, wit is onion. So that's what they say is good post row. That's what I've heard. Well, if you like the Gatorade slushies, you're going to have to ask them to take you to Rita's Water Ice at some point, because that's the other famous Philly move. <laughs> Those are some good ones. Elsa, what's yours? Um, I think, like, specifically here, I just really like the breakfasts that they have. Like, it just has, like, all of, like, the staples. And so after a long row, like, being able to go up to the dining hall and just getting, like, a big plate with, like, pancakes and, and like, hash brown tater tots and eggs it just hits the spot every time. So probably that. And covers all your nutrition bases. So I love it. That's great. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you three, this was so awesome. I love getting to know you. I'm now forever super fans of all three of you and will definitely be following you through your collegiate careers and definitely through next week at the World Championships. I think by the time this airs, you will all already be over uh, in Italy. So really a huge good luck from me and from everybody at US Rowing and from the whole community. We can't wait to watch you race. We're proud of you no matter what the results, um, but thanks just for being awesome ambassadors of our sport. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And that's all for this episode of The Swing of Things. I hope you enjoyed hearing from some of our U19 team. Join us next time to hear from the U23 rowers and their coaches. Remember to like, share, and follow from wherever you get your podcasts. It helps others to find us. And please subscribe to make sure you don't miss future episodes. Thanks for listening. Mm -hmm.